Hello, my friends. How are you? This is me, Dr. Sergio Rovinsky, here from Sao Paulo, Brazil, from Shoulder Planet. In this video, I'm showing you a very interesting uh, lecture about gunshots around the elbow. So I'm showing you different cases, very interesting cases, with very, I would say, strategical ideas to deal with these challenging scenarios, which is gunshots around the elbow. So I hope you like the video. Please subscribe to the channel, leave your comment, uh, and of course, give us your thumbs up and let's see the video. So, hello my good uh, friends. This is me, Dr. Sergio Ravinsky from Shoulder Planet here from Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil. And uh, this is a very interesting lecture uh, about a very unusual topic with which I have quite good experience, which is how to manage gunshot fractures around the elbow. So here I'm gonna uh, show you guys some cases, actually six different cases with different uh, clinical and radiographical scenarios, showing you tips and tricks in order to deal with these unusual uh, lesions. And after that, I will come to some interesting conclusions. So let's see uh, the first of our cases. So this is the case number one. So in this case, uh, I'm talking about a 22 year old boy who in September 2011 had a gunshot in the right elbow. He came with a lot of pain to our emergency department, little, really, really a lot of pain. And it was quite difficult to do well the next race. We could see that there was a, a fracture in the lateral condyle and in the uh, proximal hyuna area. So he was taken to surgery in order to make, uh, for us to wash the orifices, as, as it is, of course, an open fracture. He was put in a cast and then that was his left view. So in this left view, we can see here, uh, in a well-done left view, a highly comminuted fracture of the olecranum and actually of the proximal hyuna. Uh, in the end, here we are seeing an AP view just after surgery in which we can see that uh, there was a fracture of the uh, uh, medial condyle and which much and much probably with intraarticular involvement. It's very important to say that in these cases, a CT is a very important exam and a CT was done just after that day. This is a case from almost 10, 11 years ago. And at that time, I didn't have the idea in my mind that it's very important to put in, in such cases uh, in the beginning when they come to our emergency departments an external fixator for damage con control, as I'm going to show you guys in the next cases. But nevertheless, this case was put uh, in a cast and then a CT was done in the next day. So this is an axial view in which we can see uh, that there was indeed a fracture of the medial condyle with displacement, with articular displacement. Here we are very close to the uh, trochlea. And this is another view, a coronal view of the CT in which we can easily see the path of the gunshot from the, uh, the inlet point where it entered to the exit point, which was around the olecranon. So this is the path of the bullet that we are seeing on the left side uh, painted in uh, red. And this is a 3D CT view, the anterior view. So it's very important. It doesn't matter if we are talking about gunshots or other uh, kind of fractures. Whenever we have involvement of the articular surface, it's very important to do a, a CT. And in these cases, a CT was quite uh, really welcome. And we, if we take a look in the, uh, in the very anterior part of the CT, in the anterior view, it's not difficult for us to see that indeed that was an articular defect in the, in the trochlea that would definitely need surgical fixation. So this is the posterior view in which we, we can see a displaced fracture of the medial condyle together with a comminuted fracture of the, not only the olecranon, but the wall proximal hyuna. 
So this is the patient two days after uh, surgery. Here we are seeing the sutures in the inlet orifice and, uh, and here we are seeing the sutures on the outlet orifice. Uh, incredibly, the pa this patient has absolutely no neurovascular injury and he was operated so on that day for definitive osteosynthesis. So we did a posterior approach uh, and I would say that somehow it was quite easy to do the olecranon osteotomy because of the gunshot, but nevertheless we would have to take a lot of care not to damage that comminuted olecranon. So we isolated the ulnar nerve as we are seen on the left part of the, the image and here we are seeing a beautiful photo of the fixation of the medial condyle and we did what we could call the best possible reduction and I say that because we have a lot of comminution in these cases even in young patients like this one. So this is the immediate post-op x-rays in which we can see that we achieved a lovely reduction of the medial condyle. We put two washers uh, in the medial condyle and a plate on the proximal hyuna. I would say that the, the plate could, could be uh, a little bit more closer to the olecranon, and it was not in this case, but nevertheless, the construction was really, really well done. When we take a look at this X-ray, I mean one week post-op, we can see that we achieved what I call the, an, an almost perfect reduction. And it was not perfect because there is a lot of comminution in these cases, adding difficulty to this osteosynthesis. Nevertheless, this is the patient nine months post-op in which we can see a wonderful healing of the wall fractures, the patient was quite nice, and, uh, and I only could see that patient at that moment. This is a clinical picture, nine months post-op. It's very, very important to say that I have, uh, that I, Dr. Sergio, that I have a lot of difficulty in the follow-up of these cases because unfortunately, these young boys, they have a lot of problems with police and justice. So this boy was in, J.U., he was very young, so it's quite difficult to ask the policemen to come uh, to bring them for medical follow-up. So he is seen here with the, uh, the clothes of prison, he's using cuffs in his hands, so it's quite difficult for me as a doctor to control the follow-up. But nevertheless, he appeared nine months after surgery with a very, very good final clinical result, obviously without any physical therapy. So this is the second case I want to show you. And, the, and this is uh, a case about an, another young boy. In 22 November 2011, he received two shotguns uh, in, uh, when he was running away from police. So one shot was in the middle of the femur, as we are seeing here, and he had a very, very comminuted fracture of basically the middle shaft of the, the left femur uh, with a lot of comminution as we are seeing here and a very, very bad fracture of, uh, by a shotgun in left proximal hyuna. So this is what I like to call a bone explosion. So it's very difficult to do well done x race when these patients come to our emergency because they are in a lot of pain and it's very, very difficult for them to collaborate in order for us to obtain proper images because they have multiple injuries and obviously a lot of pain. So this patient was uh, uh, operated in the same day, of course, he was submitted to washing of both open fractures and an external fixator was put in the affected arm and in the affected femur too. It's very important for us to say that the role of putting an X fix in these cases around the elbow is very, very big because we have a lot of advantages when putting these external fixators in the upper limb on these complex fractures around the elbow. So first of all, uh, we give a lot of stability to the bony anatomy. And in this sense, we protect 
the soft tissues once we put these external fixators and that brings uh, and that brings us a lot of uh, i would say facility in order to make the definitive osteosynthesis a few days later and still with this x fix we have time i would say to do the pre-op examinations the pre-op exams a well done ct and we have time to discuss with the most experienced surgeons in order for uh, us to define what would be the best kind of osteosynthesis to do. So it's very important to put external fixators in these cases, even if these lesions are, I would say, isolated. Uh, but it was not in this case as we had a simultaneous femur. So here we, we can see an extreme fragmentation of the proximal Hyuna after we, uh, our residents put the external fixator. Really, really a, a, a very important severe comminution of the proximal Hyuna here. And this is the X fix that was applied on the femur, of course. So now we are seeing a 3D CT medial view in which we can see a lot of comminution with some uh, bullet fragments around this uh, bone okay, in the medial view, and here uh, the left view. It's interesting for us to say that depending on the kind of gunshot, we have more or less uh, bullet pieces around uh, the, the fracture area. So much probably, uh, I live in Brazil, and I, I quite know that policemen here, they use two different guns, I, I mean pistols. One is the 38 as we are seeing here in this image, and the, one, the other one is the uh, 0.40, and they are different uh, machine guns, and as we know, the 38 usually leaves a lot of uh, bullet pieces around the fracture site, differently from the, the 0.40 that I'm going to show you in some minutes in another case. So for sure, the, all of these bullets came for a... a, a 38 pistol. Here we are seeing a posterior medial view in which we can see again a very, very ugly uh, fracture of the proximal hyuna and a lot of small pieces of the bullet. So this, this patient was operated uh, by two, two different teams. So our inferior limb team uh, applied this beautiful bridge plate uh, on the the, the uh, affected femur, a very well done surgery, and obviously that was not done by me, as I, Dr. Sergio, am a dedicated, yes, an exclusive shoulder and elbow uh, surgeon who does a lot of shoulder and elbow trauma. And, and so after a few days, we, we did this surgery in 1st December 2011. That would be something... Uh, around nine, nine days after the gunshot injury. So this is a very pedagogical image in which we can see how useful is the X-Fix in terms of uh, maintaining a good quality of the surrounding soft tissues around the elbow. And th this is a key point for us to do a safe incision for definitive osteosynthesis. So in this case, this is what we did. We, we did a bridge plate with a locked reconstruction uh, plate. Uh, and this is the final uh, uh, clinical result in the very end of the surgery. This is the left view uh, just after surgery in which we can see a very nice construction. And in my opinion, it was very, I would say, uh, clever to use a locked plate since the the quality of the bone in the proximal hyuna is, I would say, not the best, even uh, being a very young patient, because we are talking, of course, about metaphysical bone. And in this sense, it was, it was quite wise, and I would say almost mandatory, in my point of view, to use locket screws in this uh, region of the proximal hyuna. So this is the immediate view in the AP view after cons this, this surgery, in my opinion, a very well done surgery. And we did a bridge plate, of course. And this patient, he disappeared. He also went to jail. It's very, very difficult 
to manage the follow-up because these are things that are beyond my control. Of course, uh, this is a, a problem of lawyers and police. But nevertheless, he came back just after six months. Here we are seeing a wonderful healing of the femur. And in, 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 in what concerns the elbow, this is the six months post-op let, uh, let X-ray and AP view. In that day, I was, I would say, happy with the AP view, but not happy with the let view. I would like to have a better view. But when these patients come, it's quite stressful. They come in cuffs. They, they usually come in cuffs with a lot of uh, policemen. And the policemen, they don't want to stay a lot of time in the hospital and they just want to bring this patient back to the prison. So it's very difficult to repeat x-rays in this, I would say, uh, OPD scenario. So I couldn't repeat the x-rays at that day because of pressure of policemen. But nevertheless, I could uh, realize that, I, uh, that we achieved good union of the fracture. So this is the boy, unfortunately, a very young boy making, I would say, wrong decisions and robbing people in the streets. But again, this is absolutely beyond my control. And so uh, you see he's using cuffs and it was difficult to position him because of the cuffs. But nevertheless, it's quite easy for us to see that he has a, he had a very good final clinical range of motion in the album, obviously without any physical therapy. And this is the six months post-op view of the bridge construction around the, distal, the proximal hyuna. So this is case number three, another interesting case. This is another shot that happened in a very, very young boy in July 2010. So here we have seen what we call the, the entry point or the inlet point so the bullet entered, I would say, almost in a point blank scenario from, uh, from anterior in the distal part of the arm. And the exit point was here, just very close to the olecranon. And amazingly, also in this case, absolutely no neurovascular injuries. So what we are seeing here is that he... he developed a lateral condyle fracture, which seemed to have a lot of comminution in the, in the articular part. And this is the left view that was quite innocent. So it's not difficult for us to understand that in these cases, a CT is an absolutely mandatory exam for us to better comprehend the fracture. So this is a sagittal view of the CT in which we can see a lot of comminution, but not exactly in the radiocapitular joint, but in a position, I would say, uh, uh, more posterior. And so from an anatomical point of view, that was an extra articular comminution. Even if we see the same case in the AP view, we can see a lot of, of comminution uh, and it's it to be uh, really extra articular when we consider also the huno humeral joint. And this is a, again a 3D CT posterior view in which we can see the same comminution in a displaced lateral condyle fracture, and this is the anterior view. So in these cases, whenever possible, it is, is interesting to try to do a percutaneous fixation. So in this case, we tried the percutaneous fixation that was quite successful, but if it was not intraoperatively, then we would have to open that for obvious reasons. So we could, in that case, uh, do a very nice fixation with two cannulated screws, a beautiful fixation uh, with washers. This is one week post-op AP view and one week post-op let view. That was the only chance I had to see that boy after surgery. So here we can see uh, the boy already with the clothes of prison. Unfortunately, he had problems with justice and police. This is the bullet entry point, just as we said preoperatively. And this is the bullet exit point. And here what we are seeing is the two percutaneous incisions for the two cannulated screws. Unfortunately, I couldn't follow this case. This patient never came back, as I have said, 
It's quite difficult to follow these cases because they have a lot of problems with justice, police, and it's difficult for policemen to bring them. So I never saw him, but I'm quite sure that he had a quite good outcome. It's, in it's interesting to say that whenever they have very bad outcomes, especially infections, they come back automatically by police from prison. But as long as they do good, unfortunately, it's quite difficult to have a good follow-up of these cases. This is case number four. And the, in, in this case, the patient received multiple again, shots. So here we can see something ar around three bullets in the thorax. The thorax was operated and they put the drain in the right part of the thorax, as we can see in the inferior and left part of the screen. And also this patient received a gun, uh, much probably by a 38 uh, uh, pistol in the supracondylian area. A very young boy that also was put in an external fixator. This is something very important, as I have said, for us to have uh, a good control of soft tissues. We take them out of emergency and then we can plan with calm and tranquility the best possible solution, discussing with a CT, of course, and with very specialized shoulder and elbow surgeons as my team, of course. So this is, again, another view of the X-Fix, and this is a 3D CT in which we can see a lot of comminution around the fracture area. So for sure, that was a gunshot from a 38 uh, pistol. So this is the patient a few days after the trauma. Here we can see again how important it is to put an external fixator in order for us to have a good condition of the surrounding soft tissues around the fracture site. And we can see here some, uh, some bandages on the thorax because uh, I would say two or three days before that surgery, the drain was then, the thorax drain was so removed. So this is what we have done. And here there is an important message because we did uh, a very typical osteosynthesis with orthogonal plates, but what we did here was a bridge construction over a formal open approach. So this is something that I, Dr. Sergio, have learned after 15 years doing this kind of cases. Sometimes the comminution is so high that the only possible solution is to do a bridge construction, even with a formal open approach. And the max you can do is some suturing of the, the comminuted area with some sutures as we did in this case with vi uh, Vicar sutures. So this is one week post-op, a quite well done osteosynthesis. One screw in the proximal area had a backup, but nevertheless, I was not worried about that. And this patient also, he disappeared. He told me on that day, he told me, I remember, Doc, I'm having problems and I'm going to disappear for some time, but you bet I'm coming in some months. And so he kept his promise. And after eight months, he appeared. So here we can see that uh, the fracture had a complete healing in spite of the fact that we had a fracture around the plate I mean a fracture around the medial plate, but nevertheless, the patient had a wonderful clinical result. And this is the movie that I have done eight months post-op. Absolutely no physical therapy. We can see some wounds in the thorax of the gunshots, full range of motion. This is uh, the scar of, of the posterior approach and a very, very good final clinical result in a young boy, absolutely without physical therapy. So now I'm coming to case five. So this case is, in, is, is almost very interesting. This is a very young boy that received a gunshot uh, in the proximal third of the radius and the una. But in this case, I'm talking about a different kind of uh, pistol because I see no remaining pieces of the bullet on the affected area. So a highly comminuted fracture on the 
proximal uh, third radius and the una, and here a left view. So in this case, we are definitely talking about a four, a zero point four uh, pistol. This is how we we call them here in Brazil. Uh, so this is a, a, a bullet that has amongst other characteristics, not to let a lot of pieces of metal around the fracture site. So an X fix was applied and in that case here we are seeing again an X fix and the message is here is the same. It's very important to put an X fix in these cases for damage control to keep uh, uh, the joint much more stable to protect the soft tissues for us to have time to do a well done CT and to discuss with very specialized surgeons how to do uh, and how to, uh, I would say, uh, do the best possible osteosynthesis. So here we are seeing again the fracture and a lot of comminution in the fracture site. And what we did in this case was something different. We do the volar approach instead of a, a posterior lateral approach, which is called the Thompson approach. So this is the volar approach that we done, which is the continuity of the Enchis approach, which is a very beautiful approach for us to deal with the radius. We have to take a lot of care with the pin, the posterior interosseous nerve. Here we can see beautifully the plate passing below the supinator, but a lot of care must be done with the radial nerve. I mean, the posterior interosseous nerve on that part. And we still did a bridge construction in uh, the una. So what we can see here is that in spite of putting uh, uh, an inter fragmentary screw on the radio fracture. We did open bridge constructions on the una and on the radius. And this is something that we have been doing for many years and it works a lot. So there is a message in, in, in this case, as in the other case, in the other cases, which is doing bridge constructions uh, over or with formal approaches is something very uh, useful in these cases because we have a lot of comminution. So this is the AP view, something around one week post-op, and this is the left view, three weeks post-op, and this is the patient only three weeks post-op. So if if we see a big volar approach anteriorly and a big posterior ap approach around the una, it was impossible to deal with these cases and to do a bridge construction here only with two small incisions because the instability of the fracture is very high because of the comminution. So the, mes the message here is the same. You can do bridge constructions over formal approaches in this uh, gunshot cases and this is something that has been quite useful to me in the last 14 years. So this is a clinical video of the patient five week post-op, a lovely range of motion, absolutely no physical therapy, some edema on, uh, I would say the, uh, the posterior lateral side of the, the forearm. The ones were healing, no problems with the radial nerve as we are seeing here, and a quite reasonable flexion and extension of the elbow as we are seeing here only five weeks post-op. So in a normal scenario, I would follow that patient for a lot of time, but that was the last time I saw that patient. As I have said, these patients, they have a lot of problems with justice, with uh, drug addiction, with the police, and it's very difficult to do a good follow-up. And this is the sixth case, the last one, much probably the most beautiful one and this case is uh, in this case show uh, will show us how important it is for us to have a clinical judgment in our daily practice. So this case happened in July 2009, a point black gunshot in the middle uh, of the, the the arm, a very comminuted fracture, much probably by a 38 pistol. 
uh, with a lot of comminution in the humors. We did an anterior bridge plate. All my Indian friends that I do a lot of these uh, uh, plates and I, Dr. Sergio, have a lot of contribution in the Indian scenario introducing the anterior bridge plate of the humors since 2009. We know that, but I was beginning to do this technique at that time. So uh, all my Indian friends know that I use a 12-hole plate in spite of a 10-hole plate, uh, as in this case. And, and uh, they also know that I only put two screws up and two screws down. But nevertheless, it was quite a reasonable construction. And six months after, without any physical therapy, this patient was quite nice with a very good final or six months post-op radiographical and clinical result. Here we, we can see that the fracture was healing quite good, was healed indeed after six months. And this is the patient after six months. Absolutely no physical therapy, good flexion, good extension of the elbow, a very good extension of the left elbow, and a very good flexion of the affected arm. He was very happy, and it's important for me to say that at that day, the patient disappeared, and he would only come back to me after one and a half year in June 2011. So in June 2011, he came back to me one and a half year after the, the uh, first, the last medical appointment and, and two years after surgery. And he had a very atypical clinical picture. He had a lot of numbness from the distal, uh, from the lateral part of the distal arm in this point in which I made uh, this mark, the letter X coming from the posterior lateral part of the forearm until the hand, what means a lot of numbness in the, in the uh, trajectory of the radial nerve, in the territory of the radial nerve. The tineal sign was positive when I did a digital percussion of that point uh, marked by the letter X, and that numbness was indeed bothering the patient too much. He had no pain but the numbness was really driving the patient crazy. And my interpretation, my clinical interpretation was not difficult. So there was a bullet, a piece of bullet here that much probably would be bothering the radial nerve. So it's important for us to understand this. In the ideal scenario, the ideal conduct would be to ask for an electroneuromyography, what means a nerve conduction study, and especially with a very experienced electroneuromyographist. But nevertheless, it's difficult to do this in my public hospital. This case is from 2009, and still nowadays, 11 years after, I have difficulty in asking this exam for a nerve conduction study because it's very difficult to, all, to obtain. We have a big waiting list. My public hospital takes care of one point three million people. I repeat, 1.3 million people here in the uh, periphery of the city of Sao Paulo. And I couldn't wait for that electroneuromyography uh, because the patient was very symptomatic and, and I would be afraid of nerve damage over time. So what was my clinical solution? Well, if we consider that the clinical picture was extremely clear, the patient was very symptomatic, and as we all know, the clinic is always sovereign, I discussed the case with the hand surgeon, with our hand surgeon, and we decided to explore the radial nerve to see what was happening, to do a, a neurolysis and try to remove the bullet uh, fragment. And so that was done. And the patient had a little bit of, I would say, uh, a little, a little uh, uh, pain, not exactly pain, but something was bothering him around the plate. So once we operated that, I took the opportunity to remove the plate. I would not remove that uh, plate in a normal scenario. The patient would not come to me just ab about the very, uh, I would say, the very low complaints around the plate. But once I was there, I took the opportunity to also remove the plate. So immediately after we removed the plate, we marked the position of the bullet with a marking pen as we are seeing here. We established the position of the bullet fragment with the C-arm 
uh, in true AP view and in LED view. And that would be our incision as per our hand surgeon. So from posterior lateral to anterior to, uh, to, to from uh, posterior superior to anterior inferior as per the decision of our hand surgeon. So this is a beautiful picture of the radial nerve fully dissected and what we are seeing here in this beautiful image is what is called the neuroma in continuity. It's a kind of neuroma that can affect uh, some nerves and much probably that was related to a thermal lesion to problems with temperature as this was a point blank uh, gunshot. So what we did here uh, was exa exactly this, an ample neurolysis, which usually is enough for these patients to get better. So we made a broad neurolysis of the neuroma in continuity, and that was the final picture in the end of this, the surgery. I wanted to avoid a lot of bleeding and a lot of hematoma to damage or to bother the radial nerve because we already had uh, I would say enough problems with the radial nerve, so I put a drain. And very interestingly, that was the patient eight hours, I repeat, eight hours in that night before I left surgery, uh, the hospital quite uh, late in the, in the night with a full movement and a full function of the affected radial nerve. I was quite sure that the patient would have a, a, a dropped hand and a full palsy of the radial nerve for about three months. But for reasons that I, Dr. Sergio, cannot explain, he was with a perfect function of the radial nerve, as we can see in this video. So the radial nerve in the same day was working perfectly and no pulses after that big surgery around that radial nerve. So this is the X-ray taken uh, one and a half months after the surgery with a quite good reduction of the humerus, a little bit antecurvatum as we see in the left view, but absolutely acceptable as we all know. And this is the clinical view one month post-op of the patient with the, uh, the, with the scars that were healing quite good. And this is the scar of the radial nerve surgery full range of motion of the elbow uh, and the numbness was quite, quite better. He was quite happy, a very fast recovery of all of this, that numbness. And this is the patient one month post-op in which we can see that uh, his wrist was extending, the radial nerve was okay from a, a motor point of view a little bit of difficulty in flexion, but he would gain that over time for sure. And he was very, very happy at that moment. So a beautiful uh, uh, and fast outcome over this very unusual and quite odd case. So having said that, I'm, go I'm, I'm showing you now my final conclusion. So I, I have these take home messages for you boys. So the first one is this. So some gunshot wounds, they can uh, reproduce quite known patterns of fractures that we are used to treat around the elbow. So I'm talking about fractures around the lateral condyle, the medial condyle, the olecranon, the proximal hyuna, and the supracondylian area. And as long as we comprehend the fracture, we can treat them accordingly as we do in a regular basis. As a second message, it's important for us to understand that whenever these patients they come to emergency, it's very useful to put, as I have shown in many cases, an external fixation for damage con control. Because once we do that, we will strongly protect the soft tissues around the elbow, around the affected area, and that will give us time to do a CT, to discuss the case with very specialized surger, uh, surgeons, okay? until we do the definitive management and the ultimate and definitive osteosynthesis. And this is my number three take home message, which is whenever we have a big 
comminution, as we have seen in many cases here, we must always consider doing bridge constructions even with formal big open approaches. This is something very important about these cases. This is a very good tool for such cases because when we have the comminuted area, sometimes it's impossible to do any fixation in sky, uh, and just some kinds of uh, small and simple circlage, as I have said, as, as I have shown in one case with Vicar sutures and uh, I would say other simple sutures. So keep in mind, my friends, you can do bridge constructions with even... Uh, I would say big formal approaches. There is no problem about it, and this is something very useful this, for this guys, this kind of uh, cases with highly comminuted fractures caused by gunshots. So, having said that, this is the end. Thank you, my good friends. This is my email. You can send me an email wherever, whenever you wish. Please help me to spread my channel, YouTube.com/slash Shoulder Planet, Shoulder Planet is my personal project in international education in shoulder and elbow medicine and surgery. So please help me spread in my channel. And that's it, my friends. Thank you very much. So my friends, I hope you like it. It is beautiful lecture and video about gunshots around the elbow. So please don't forget, subscribe to the channel, leave your comment, give us your thumbs up, and see you in the next video. As Dr. Sergio always says, and we'll keep on saying, never stop flying. See you, my good friends.